and welcome to Using Structural Pattern Matching in Python. My name's Joseph, and I will be your guide through the intricacies of one of Python's newer features, structural pattern matching. Introduced in Python 3.10 back in late 2021, structural pattern matching is still quite new as a feature of the language. In fact, Python was already 30 years old at that point. It's nice to see people and programming languages learning new things after 30, right? Anyway, being so relatively new of a feature, pattern matching often goes overlooked by experienced and inexperienced Python developers alike. And because it's so versatile, many of its features are actually ignored or underused, which is a real shame. Pattern matching, when used appropriately, can make your code so much cleaner and more maintainable. If you haven't been using structural pattern matching, or maybe just not using it to its fullest, you've been missing out, but no longer. Because by the end of this course, you'll master the syntax of the match statement and case clauses used in pattern matching. You'll understand the different types of patterns you can build in Python. You'll also become skilled at leveraging advanced pattern matching techniques. You'll develop a deep understanding of pattern matching's limitations and when to apply it. And finally, you'll solidify what you've learned by working with practical examples of pattern matching, like using it for data validation or to read and parse deeply nested hierarchical data structures. Now, to get the most out of this course, you really should have a basic understanding of Python's conditional statements, loops, functions, and classes. And it would also help if you had some familiarity with built-in data structures like tuples, lists, and dictionaries. So meet me in the next lesson where we'll get into the nitty gritty of structural pattern matching. Before we get to the exciting action of using structural pattern matching, you'll want to familiarize yourself with its terminology and syntax. Structural pattern matching was added to the language in Python 3.10. It makes use of three new soft keywords, match, case, and underscore, which is used as a wildcard. Now, soft keyword is kind of a new concept. They're a little bit different from other Python keywords because they're contextual. Outside of their keyword context, they're considered valid variable names. But to minimize confusion, I do recommend treating them like any other keyword. With structural pattern matching, you can write clean declarative control flows without using if else. What does declarative mean? You'll see in an example soon, but it's essentially a programming style that is focused on describing what your code should do rather than how it should be done. In contrast, code that focuses on how is called imperative. Lastly, structural pattern matching is based on applying two key concepts, structural patterns and pattern matching. This is what the rest of the lesson is about. First, let's look at structural patterns. There are several kinds of structural patterns available in Python. Structural patterns can describe an object by its type, its value, its shape, its identity, or getting more complex here, its constituent elements. And this can be done via object deconstruction, which is also called destructuring. Destructuring is not new to Python. You've probably used it yourself. Here are a few of the ways that Python supported object deconstruction prior to the introduction of pattern matching. You can unpack Python iterables using iterable unpacking and the star operator. For example, head star middle tail equals range 10. This stores the first element of the range in head, the last in tail, and the remaining elements in middle. You can use object deconstruction to unpack and merge dictionaries. A dictionary literal with the contents star star headers star star cookies unpacks the headers and cookies dictionaries and creates a new dictionary with the keys and values of both. Using square bracket accessors, you can access items by position or index in sequence types, like pulling out last item from the items list by accessing the element at index minus one. Or you can access items by key in mapping types like dictionaries, pulling out path from os.environ at the key path. Finally, accessing attributes of an object by their name can be done via the dot accessor, like getting date from datetime.date. .date. You'll soon see that structural pattern matching in Python continues to build on this concept of deconstruction, allowing you to match complex and very specific data structures. So those are structural patterns. What about pattern matching? Match takes a subject. Case introduces a pattern to compare against. See this example. It may seem complicated right now, but by the end of this course, you'll be able to write patterns like this with ease. Match subject, colon, case, list, and in square brackets, int bar float as x, int bar float as y, zero, colon, print an f string containing point, 
with the values of x and y interpolated inside a pair of parentheses. Subject here can be any valid expression in Python. And this specific pattern defined by case will match a list of two numerics and a third element equal to zero. Think about how you could implement the same behavior without pattern matching. On the left-hand side, we have our previous example. And on the right-hand side, we have one way you could perform the same matching without using patterns. If is instance subject list and len subject equals three. If is instance subject at index zero, int or float, and is instance subject at index one, int or float, and subject at index two equals zero, x, y, underscore equals subject, and print the same f string reporting a point with x and y values. Note that in this case, the underscore used in unpacking subject is a common Python idiom, indicating that whatever the contents of the underscore variable, it won't be used in the rest of the program. This is distinct from how you'll see the character being used in future lessons. So comparing these two different styles, you can see our pattern matching code is very concise and very declarative. You simply describe the kind of object you'd like to match as a pattern, and Python handles the rest. Without pattern matching, the code is verbose, to say the least. It's a little hard to read, and it's also imperative. You define exactly how to match subject through repeated if conditions. Now, imperative isn't always wrong and declarative isn't always right. But I know in this case, which style I would prefer to use. So generally, when should you use structural pattern matching? Structural pattern matching is ideal for situations where data structures are complex or nested. Decisions are made based on parts of the data using destructuring. Patterns to match are largely exclusive of each other. And conditions are not based on complex business rules requiring lots of computation or many calculations at runtime. Congratulations, you made it through the theory and now it's time for the practice. In the next lesson, we'll introduce a few basic patterns and get started on a project to see them in action. In this lesson, you're going to explore the most basic types of structural patterns. Literal patterns, which match on Python literals like string literals or integer literals. Value patterns, which are a way to match on constant values. And this is a little trickier than it sounds, trust me. And the wildcard pattern, which matches to any subject. Here's an example of a literal pattern. Match subject, case the string Python, print it's Python. Case the integer 42, print it's 42. In this example, both Python and 42 are Python literals. Subject will be matched based on its equality to these case clauses. Python has quite a few kinds of literals, actually. The bytes literal is enclosed with single or double quotes and prepended by a lowercase b. It represents a series of bytes. String literals are enclosed in single or double quotes. Integer literals look like numbers and can include a negative sign. Float literals are numbers that include a decimal point. Complex literals represent complex numbers with real and imaginary components on the left and right hand side of the plus sign respectively. The imaginary part denoted by a trailing lowercase j. If you're really into math, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but there won't be any complex analysis in this course. The Boolean literals are capital T true and capital F false. And the none type literal is capital N none. The last column in this table represents how these patterns are matched in structural pattern matching. You can see how most of them are matched by equality, but the Boolean and none types are matched by identity. This is because true, false, and none are what's known as singletons in Python. They each share a single object in memory that all references to them point towards. Matching by equality is equivalent to using the equality test operator, the double equal sign, whereas matching by identity is done using the Python keyword is. This is a subtle distinction, but it's one to be aware of. Next up are value patterns. As structural patterns, value patterns emulate the concept of pattern matching on constants. As developers, we typically try to avoid hard coding literals throughout our programs. Instead, we prefer to define constants separately from the logic in our code. But if you wish to match against constant values using structural pattern matching, you have to do things a little bit differently. Your constant values must be enclosed within a namespace. This can be something like a class, enum, or module, for example. Once your constant is so enclosed, you must refer to it by its fully qualified name. 
using at least one dot accessor. And this is really important. If you aren't accessing the constant by its fully qualified name, you'll actually be creating a capture pattern instead, which is something entirely different. You'll see capture patterns more in the next lesson. So here's how you can adapt the previous example using value patterns instead. Create a class subject with the class attributes python equals the string python and 42 equals the integer 42. Now match subject, lowercase s, case capital S subject dot python, print it's python, case capital S subject dot 42, print it's 42. The subject class here provides the namespace for the values Python and 42. Moving on to the wildcard pattern. As a structural pattern, the wildcard pattern uses underscore as a pattern. For example, match subject, case underscore, print, it's anything. Because the wildcard matches to any subject, so subject could be anything in this case. It serves as a default pattern, and because it matches to anything, it should be the last case clause that you provide to your match. Now let's move to the IDE and get started using these patterns. You're going to build your own REFL, the interactive read evaluate print loop that comes built in with Python. Handling user supplied inputs like this is a great application of pattern matching. You'll start with a simple literal pattern and build from there. Here's the starting script you're gonna work with. Import sys and import traceback. You'll use these later. Next, the constant prompt contains the string backslash capital N and snake in curly brackets with a space at the end. This will be the prompt for your REPL. It's the Unicode escape sequence for the snake emoji, and you'll see it when you run the code. Create the function main. This will hold all of the logic of your REPL. Def main, print type help for more information. This serves as a welcome message. Next, while true, starts a while loop that will run indefinitely. And you'll wrap your pattern matching logic in a try accept block. Match input, passing prompt to the input function. This is where your user input comes from. Case the string help in lowercase. Create the variable message and store an F string that prints Python along with the current version number as retrieved by sys.version. Then print the message. Next, some error handling. Accept keyboard interrupt. That'll be the result of typing control plus C into the prompt and print a new line with the message keyboard interrupt. Accept EOF error, that's end of file error. And that will be the result of typing control plus D into the prompt. Print nothing, which prints a new line and call the built-in exit function, which will exit the currently running Python program. And one more broad accept for exception. And this you'll use later to pass error information back onto the user via the line traceback.printexe file equals sys.stdout, which points to the standard output, in this case, the user's REPL session. Finally, use the if dunder name equals the string dunder main guard and run the main function. This is another Python idiom that prevents main from being run unless REPL.py is the entry point to the program. Open a shell and run python REPL.py. Here's your prompt. Now you can try things out. Type help. Here's the info from sys.version. Type anything. You can see nothing happens because you aren't yet handling this condition. Type control plus C. And there's your keyboard interrupt. Finally, to close, type control plus D. And it closes. Very basic, but a good proof of concept. Next, let's add a couple things. Let's expand the available commands using value patterns and add a wildcard condition for unexpected inputs. I'll put away the terminal for now. First, add a class command that will store the command options. Command has three class attributes, help, storing the string help, exit, storing the string exit, and quit, storing the string quit. Now you can modify your welcome message to include the new commands. And now you can modify your existing case clause and add two new ones to handle these commands. Change the first case to match command.help. Add a case for handling command.exit, where you break the loop. 
and add a case for handling command.quit to also break the loop. And in case you get any unexpected inputs, you can add a wildcard condition to handle that as well. So for any unknown inputs, you'll print, please type a command. Now save the file and bring up the terminal again. Python REPL.py. Try out some commands. Help. Something random. And exit. Help matches command.help. Something random gets caught by the wildcard condition and prints the line, please type a command. And exit matches with command.exit, just like you planned, breaking the while loop and exiting the function. OK. You started off with a literal pattern and moved on to implement the value and wildcard patterns. But there's still a lot of work left. For instance, command.exit and command.quit both do the same thing, don't they? In the next lesson, you'll learn how this can be improved, among other techniques. Let's explore a few more fundamental pattern types. In this lesson, you'll see OR patterns, capture patterns, and guards. First up, OR patterns. OR patterns use the bitwise OR operator. Some call it a vertical bar, some call it a pipe. They're used to combine structural patterns into a union of alternative subpatterns. For example, match subject, case the string Python, or the integer 42, print it's Python or 42. Python or 42 will match the case clause. Moving on to capture patterns. These are as interesting as they are powerful. Capture patterns are like defining a variable inside your case clause. Capture patterns create local variables that can be used within the case block. They must, however, use valid variable names in Python, just like any other variable declaration. For example, match subject, case, what it is, print an F string, interpolating whatever what it is is into the string. So what it is, in this case, captures the content of subject making it usable in the corresponding code block. But be careful, because when used without a guard, this matches to any subject unconditionally. Probably not what you want to do. Speaking of guards, you can build even more complex case clauses by using guards. Guards add conditional logic to the case clause. They're part of the case clause and not part of the structural pattern itself. In fact, guards will only be evaluated when the related pattern matches the subject. Here's an example. Match subject. Case what it is if what it is equals the string Python. Then print it's Python. What it is captures the subject, but the code block only executes when what it is is equal to the string Python. The if condition is the guard. I'll admit these examples are simple and a little silly, but now you're ready to open up your IDE and get started on using these patterns to improve your REPL.